team. This is ridiculous. I can't believe he left everything like this for me. Do you have a minute, Madison? Sure, Riley, what's up? Remember how you said I would need to take over Sam's work while he's on vacation? Yes. Well, he didn't exactly give me much information on what he's working on or where he keeps all his files, and I'm spending a lot of time trying to find things. He also didn't notify any of his clients that he would be out, so when they call and I take the call, they seem annoyed that they can't speak with him. Well, as you know, it is ultimately your responsibility to complete those tasks. If he isn't providing you with enough information, you need to speak with him about it. So this is my fault? Now I didn't say that. I just said you need to figure out a way to complete the work you've been assigned. I can't hold everyone's hand. You have to take some initiative. Hey Riley, can you get me the info from Sam's meeting with Aaron? He said he would type up the details so I could enter it into our system for sales leads. Sure, if I can find it. He always leaves and he doesn't give me any details on what's going on. I have to fend for myself half the time. Oh, did you tell Madison? Yeah, but she acted like it's my problem since I'm the one who takes over for him when he's out. Well, that doesn't seem very fair. It's not, but apparently it's my problem to sort out. I think you should talk to someone about this. I've got just the person. How about you? Ask Jack and Jean. In this case, it feels as if Madison has abandoned Riley. It seems to me as the leader, Madison needs to do a better job of orchestrating the handoff between Riley and Sam. While you could argue that Riley and Sam should have worked out the details, Madison should have a process in place to ensure that all the updates are occurring. Additionally, Madison's response to Riley is condescending and unsupportive. I don't think any working adult would want to be told that their hand has to be held. A fundamental role of a manager is to get work done through other people. There are three things that Madison and all managers should keep in mind. First, when assigning work, it should be based on a person's strengths, not only on who has capacity. Strengths, those things people do well and enjoy, are the key driver in great performance and enthusiasm for the workplace. Second, when assigning work, there should be clear expectations of who will do what by when. There is a fundamental flaw in Madison's approach. She doesn't set clear expectations. In this case, she should have collaborated with Riley and Sam, outlining their responsibilities when Sam goes on vacation. Since everyone takes a vacation, this process should be in place for all members of the team. Third, when Riley is complaining about Sam, Madison should work with Riley on how to discuss the situation with Sam. If Madison can coach Riley on an effective approach to have a difficult and emotional conversation, those tips will only serve Riley in the future. We're all busy, but taking the time to understand and leverage each person's strengths, set clear expectations, and create a cohesive team are the things managers can't afford to be too busy for. If you have a leadership concern, please email me at askjoe at mycuservices.com. I'd love to help. Have a leadership concern and need a second opinion? Ask Joe and Jean. Send your questions to askjoe at mycuservices.com.